villages. The master possesses them. It mustn't hurt them. Hurt guards, though. They seek out an object of great power. The rune key is held aloft by the flow of water from the fountain. You may have to wait for the next drought. Smith's Monthly. Old man Willie Green of Gallows Town was awarded Smithy of the Season by our readers. His outstanding casts have produced many intricate and hard-wearing iron goods and sculptures. Willie only uses the finest of metals in his work and is particularly noted for his magnificent busts. <laughs> Old man Willie was quoted as saying, Aye, when I get pumping on me bellows, there's no stopping me. It's all in the rhythm. Up and down, up and down. I've always been inspired by the stories of Stanya Iron Hewer, <laughs> the greatest smithy there ever was.
villagers. The master possesses them. <laughs> History of Galomir, Volume 1. During the dark time that was Galomir's not-too-distant past, it was King Peregrine who thwarted Zerok the Necromancer and his plan to enslave the land. Zerok, once the king's mage, had fallen out of favor with the ruler for conducting outlandish experiments on the bodies of the dead. It was said that deep within Peregrine Castle, the dead were restless. The dead are to be honored, not kept as the playthings of alchemists, declared King Peregrine as he banished Zerok from the castle. All of Zerok's living dead were routed out and destroyed. Zerok, being an unforgiving soul, went into hiding and vowed to wreak his revenge on the king. History of Galamir, Volume 2. Rumors of ill-doing and dark deeds abounded through the land of Galamir. It was whispered that Zerok had employed the aid of shadowy demons to help build a vast castle. Under the cover of night, Zerok's dark army spilled forth from the corrupt haven. The army marched south across the Silver Mountains and through the Silver Woods. Soon afterwards, even the pumpkin lands belonged to Zerok. The folk of Gallows Town cried out for help. Save us, good King Peregrine. Retaliation was swift and violent. King Peregrine's forces, led by the brave Sir Fortescue, drove Zerok's army back from Gallows Town. Oh, there was much rejoicing, but the war was not yet over. <laughs> History of Galomir, Volume 3. News that Xerox's army had now taken the floodlands caused much concern. From this vantage point, Xerox could march west to take the enchanted forest. This sacred place would prove a bitter defeat if it fell into the hands of the evil sorcerer. It was Sir Dan Fortescue who once again led the king's militia to rid the demon host from the land. Yet the evil wizard was cunning and had prepared an ambush. Titanic battle ensued, of which history has never seen the like. It is said that the day would have gone to Zerok, but for the skill and valor of one man. Fortescue led the charge deep into the massed ranks of the undead, felling Zerok's bodyguard, the fearful Lord Kodok, and before finally succumbing to his own mortal wounds, slew the traitorous sorcerer with a mighty sweep of his sword. History of Galamir, Volume 4. The forces of evil were destroyed, but at a terrible price. None but a handful of the king's militia returned from that field. Galamir lost a whole generation of young men that day, including Canny Tim, the legendary crossbowman, and Fortescue's second in command, who fell in the first volley of arrows. Xerox's body was never found, though if it lies unmourned in an unmarked grave, then no one in Galamir would shed a tear. The shadow demons that had fallen under Xerox's banner were unnatural creatures that did not belong in the world of mortal men. The king declared that they be banished, entombed under the pure earth of the enchanted earth. Imprisoned, 
within an impregnable box of the king's design. The demons were buried deep underground. Their tomb was sealed with a magical device that has since come to be known as the Shadow Artifact. Heroes from History, a retrospective. Chapter One. In addition to being the strongest man who ever lived, Stanier Ironhewer was unsurpassed in his skill as a blacksmith. He was equally happy pounding on his anvil at home as he was pounding on someone's head in battle. It was said that his only fear was the end of the village smithy as the focus of manufacture in favor of more centralized units. <laughs> As if. Tourist Guide to Galamere, Part 1. The land of Galamere is a wondrous land of breathtaking sights and adventure. If it's beauty you are looking for, be sure to check out the sights of the enchanted forest. Scale the heights and see the nests of giant dragon birds. Seek out weird and wonderful plant life. Go ooh and ah at the sight of baby dragon toads splashing about in the crystal clear ponds. Why not take a walk through the pumpkin valley? Pumpkin is Galomir's favorite dish and about now, the valley is just bulging under the weight of young podlings awaiting harvest. <laughs> Tourist Guide to Galamere, Part 2. If it's mystery you're looking for, then the seasoned adventurer should travel to the ruins of King Peregrine's castle. Yes, this is the fortress from which the fabled King Peregrine once hailed. It is said that the king's crown was lost in the dungeons below the castle, and that the ghost of the regent himself now haunts these cold stone passageways. Spooky. Why not take the swamps and seek out the mythical town of Mellowmead? This place was once said to be a place of fantastical arcane alchemy, but an age has passed since it was consumed by the murky swamps. Perhaps great treasure awaits any adventurer that can locate its watery resting place. To whom it may concern, I must make haste, for Xerox's men will be here within the hour. I have taken the crucifix from the church. It is the key to a key. I used the cross to make the attached cast. Then I had it destroyed. It is my hope that this cast falls into the hands of a just and good hero. Signed, the town mayor. A crucifix once stood here, but the mayor took it. Find a replacement and see how the church should really look.
bust of Mr. Shanks, landlord of the Troll's Head. To clean the statue, lower the pedestal. Comrades, tear this place apart. If we don't find the shadow artifact, Lord Zarak will have us mocking out the demons for the next millennium.
Dear sir and madam, on my travels across Galania, I have come across many mysterious and enchanting finds. However, that which filled me with deepest dread was discovery of the tomb of the shadow demons. The key to their dank prison, the mysterious shadow artifact, is now in my possession. Yours fearfully, the town mayor. Capture that greedy profiteer, the town mayor. Take him to the asylum dungeons. Give the fat boy a good going over. Locate the shadow artifact. Bring me back something nice. 